my name is Sherry Creighton and I'm the Zoo Operations Manager. Um, my role is uh, coordinating all the animal sections. I would be directly responsible for um, the whole of the animal areas. I've got over 36 uh, staff and I take care of three different sections of the zoo. We have the African Plains, which is all the African Plains animals. We have the near side and the far side. Um, the near side section would have sea lions, the city farm and um, small monkeys. Far side has all the carnivores and all the large apes. So it's quite varied and uh, it's quite a lot of, lot of work and, um, that you have to do. You've got to coordinate the training of staff, make sure animal diets are up to scratch, make sure health and safety is in place, make sure people are being trained and signed off in areas that they know that how to work with the uh, animals in a proper and safe uh, manner. Well, Dublin Zoo has been very successful in recent years. You know, um, the, the main role of a, of, a, of a modern zoo is conservation and protecting rare and endangered species. One of the great successes of, pre of recent years has been our elephant program where we've uh, successfully bred two Asian elephants. Asian elephants are down to less than 30,000 animals in the world. They're very rare and they're endangered so without good zoos and good zoos getting involved well that means then you know uh, these animals will go extinct in the wild. Hello, my name is James and I work with the elephants 10 years. Behind us we have five elephants and they're Asian elephants which means they come from Southeast Asia. The eldest member of the herd is Bernadina. She's 26 years of age. We also have her sister, who's Yasmin, who's 20 years of age, and their offspring. Okay, one of one of the most successful uh, areas that we've done in recent years is, is to mimic um, or try recreate in the zoo a, na a natural animal habitat, and we've done that with the African savanna, the African plains area. Basically what you have there, you have a lot of species that would cope Pacific and live together in the African savanna plain. Like you have giraffe, you have rhino, you have ostrich, you have zebra. And they would traditionally live together. So what we've done, we've tried to create a savanna look for them, which is as natural as possible to what they would experience uh, in, you know, in the wild. So you're recreating natural habitats, and that's what zo zoos do. They try to take a piece of the animal's world, bring it into, into Dublin Zoo. What that does then, it allows the animals to have species specific behaviours, I mean behaviours that they would naturally do in the wild. They're with their, the same amount of animals that they would be in the wild, they have the same amount of uh, family units that they would have in the wild and the same structure. So we need to mimic that as close as possible and it's a very important. It's also for the visitor that comes to the zoo, it's like what they call landscape immersion. You're walking in among the savannah and you feel like you're part of it and you get to see the animals up at a high, high level and high level. So very important in the, in the design principles of the zoo. So one of one of the recent uh, recent things that we've done too is that Dublin Zoo started a series on TV True, uh, TV Three. This has been hugely successful. In fact, over 250,000 people were, were watching it every week. And what I've done, I got a chance for uh, the public at home to see like the extensive work that goes into running a modern zoo. Because you know it's not just about putting animals into areas. There's a whole design concept. You know they've got to have an environmental enrichment program, which means we, we we present their food to them in different ways every day to keep them physically and mentally stimulated. And plus the veterinary aspect of things. On the program you'll see where um, I, def I I had my suspicions that one of the little cubs was slightly unwell, and we found out that she had a murmuration in the heart. But we took her straight away to the vet college. Uh, we got it sorted, we got it checked out, we had introduced physiotherapy with her that I was doing every day with her and she has since been hugely successful and now what's going to happen is later on this June she's going to go to a zoo in France and become part of the international breeding programme to save Sumatran tigers. There's only 230 Sumatran tigers left in the wild maybe, 250 maximum and there's maybe about 150 in zoos worldwide. So I mean that can give you an idea of you know the threat to these animals and why good zoos exist. I mean, they're still being killed for you know, medicines in, in China. They're still being killed for the fur on their back. So without zoos keeping, these animals wouldn't survive. So it's a big cooperation among zoos. Dublin Zoo is part of an organization called IASA, which is the European Association of Zoos and Aquariums. And there's over 600 zoos that are involved in that. We exchange animals, we exchange information, we exchange experience, knowledge, diets, everything to make sure that the animals have a very high standard, standard of husbandry and life. So it's a very you know, intricate part of uh, successful animal breeding. All the species that you see around the zoo, when you're going around, all these are allocated species because in some way they're either threatened with extinction in the wild or uh, their, their natural habitats are being destroyed. Unfortunately the world now isn't big enough for the amount of people that are living here to sustain it. And the ones to suffer most are the animals because trees are being t chopped down for for, you know, for wood and for logs and that means primates have nowhere to live. And then, you know, in a lot of the countries that um, 
these animals come from, the people themselves are hungry and it's very hard to tell a man that lives in a mud hut that has 10 kids that you know you're not to be shooting the monkey because uh, the monkey's rare, well he doesn't really care, he just wants to care about feeding his kids. So then that's where zoos have to come in and educate communities, give the people an alternative, an alternative way to feed their children, an alternative way to live. Very, very important. So this is the role of the modern zoo. It's not just about keeping the animals here in the zoo, it's about bringing the message to the public about the natural world, how it needs help, and then helping the communities that really need help in, in, in the poorer parts of the world.